the White Plague, one of the most fatal diseases known to man. Its infliction was agonizing, its treatment a mystery. Tuberculosis has been haunting mankind from as early as 2400 BC. It has killed more human beings than any other disease, more than the Black Plague, more than smallpox, more than cancer. Yet for centuries, there were no legitimate methods of treatment. It wasn't until the mid 20th century that Dr. Selman Waxman and his research team at Rutgers University unraveled the secrets of tuberculosis with the discovery of the antibiotic streptomycin. The revolutionary method for uncovering therapeutic microorganisms in the soil developed by Waxman, known as the shotgun approach, was later used to find other antibiotics. Such antibiotics paved the way for the pharmaceutical field, expanding the process of the mass production of drugs. Tuberculosis is contagious, excruciating, and unrelenting. It was once known as consumption because the bodies of its victims wasted away slowly. As they progressed to their deaths, they grew extremely pale, hence the name the White Plague. In the 1800s, ludicrous treatment methods for tuberculosis were developed, locking consumptives in rooms for long periods of time, prescribing antimony and digitalis, and bleeding by leeches were common practices but they often do more harm than help. At the end of the 19th century, German scientist Peter Detweiler developed a sanatorium. Treatment in sanatoriums consisted of fresh air, healthy diets, exercise, and hydrotherapy. Unfortunately, the only benefit that came of this medical care was that tuberculosis victims were quarantined. Otherwise, sanatoriums failed to eradicate this widespread disease. The Industrial Revolution, which brought about unsanitary conditions in crowded cities, spurred an even more rampant spread of tuberculosis, claiming more than a thousand per a hundred thousand lives in 1780 in England. Although living conditions were gradually improved, tuberculosis still caused 200 deaths per a hundred thousand people in the U.S. in 1900. In 1937, it was the leading killer in the U.S. So, when penicillin was discovered in 1928 and then purified nine years later, there was a hope for more miraculous antibiotics. Although penicillin would not cure tuberculosis, it represented a major step in fighting bacterial infections. A major step towards finding a cure for tuberculosis occurred on March 24, 1882, when Robert Koch discovered Mycobacterium tuberculosis, the bacterium that causes tuberculosis. He said, if the importance of a disease for mankind is measured by the number of fatalities it causes, then tuberculosis must be considered much more important than those most feared infectious diseases, plague, cholera, and the like. One in seven of all human beings die from tuberculosis. Yet even with Koch's discovery of the bacterium responsible for the infliction, tuberculosis remained a mystery. It wasn't until over 60 years later that a spark of ingenuity led to a major medical breakthrough. Born in 1888 on a farm in Russia, Selman Waxman and his fascination with soil microbes, sparked by his farming background, would answer this hope with a definitive cure for tuberculosis. After immigrating to the U.S. in 1910, Waxman was admitted to Rutgers University, where he began intensive studies of microorganisms living in soil. His favorite microbes were the actinomycetes, a class of microorganisms largely ignored due to their slow growth. But Waxman studied these actinomycetes carefully, intrigued by how much they resembled moles. When the success of purifying penicillin, a mold, was published, Waxman was immediately excited, seeing the potential in his actinomycetes to be life-saving agents. So we came tearing into the lab one day, said, Woodruff, Woodruff, drop everything you're doing. He said, my, my favorite microorganisms are actinomycetes, or ones he worked with a lot. So, you go get an actinomycete that makes an antibiotic. At the time that I first went into antibiotics with Dr. Waxman, um, uh, sulfur drugs were the only thing really capable of treating what we used to call blood poisoning, which was a bacterial infection of the bloodstream. The sulfur drugs would cure staphylococci, which are round uh, microorganisms that clump together, but they do not cure streptococci, the ones that are in a chain. If you go to tuberculosis, no one had a chance with that. that. That's such a resistant organism. Waxman soon developed a screening process called the shotgun approach for uncovering microbes in soil. 
This method involved the isolation, proliferation, and eventual testing of soil microbes for antibiotic properties. Using this developed screening program, Waxman, his former student H.B. Woodruff, and a team of graduate students isolated actinomycin and streptothricin from soil samples. These proved, unfortunately, too toxic to be used as antibiotics. The Rutgers team kept searching, and finally, in 1943, a graduate student, Albert Schatz, discovered streptomycin, derived from Waxman's actinomycetes. After several trials on tuberculosis-infected rodents at the Mayo Clinic in Phoenix, Arizona, obvious evidence demonstrated the remedial effects of streptomycin, but the question still remained as to whether the microbe could successfully treat humans. On September 27, 1944, streptomycin cured its first human patient, a two-week-old infant suffering from a heavy urinary infection, septicemia, and meningitis. In 1944, a clinical trial was conducted on over 300 cases of tuberculosis, and streptomycin was hailed as a miracle drug, curing prevalent diseases such as typhoid, septicemia, meningitis, and tuberculosis. Merck, a fledgling pharmaceutical company based in New Jersey, began the production of streptomycin in 1945, but generously reserved the patent rights to Rutgers University. In addition, Merck agreed to a non-exclusive license for manufacturing streptomycin because they understood the desperation for antibiotics due to the ongoing World War II. Streptomycin was provided first to the soldiers, but when it was made available to the public in 1946, it quickly tamed the white plague, making the disease almost negligible in the U.S. Pharmaceutical companies expanded rapidly throughout the world in an effort to keep up with the numerous antibiotic discoveries. It made Merck, it made Squibb, it made, it made these small companies that were here in New Jersey mm -hmm. become big, big companies. Yes, when antibiotics came along, it really turned, turned the field wide over. With the large-scale manufacturing of streptomycin, the tuberculosis death rate in the U.S. decreased by two-thirds. In 1952, Waxman was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine for his ingenious, systematic, and successful studies of the soil microbes that have led to the discovery of streptomycin, the first antibiotic to remedy tuberculosis. Ernst Chain, one of the biologists that worked on penicillin, encapsulated Waxman's contributions to the antibiotic field when he said, Even if we had done no work on penicillin, and even if Fleming had not published his paper in 1929, Waxman's screening program would have led sooner or later to the discovery of all useful antibiotics, including penicillin. It's actually an extremely efficient antibiotic for lots of infectious agents, and uh, it was a big boost to the armamentarium uh, that existed. But the innovation wasn't the individual drug, the innovation was the technology for finding it. That's the innovation. But they did discover a lot of new antibiotics by using those Same techniques. Methods. Sure, tetracycline as an example. Streptomycin was a planned discovery. Now, later on, they got another drug called neomycin, which uh, uh, is also you know, a part of a, a planned uh, approach. Before streptomycin was discovered in 1943 and later distributed to the public in 1946, tuberculosis was the most fatal and feared disease in the world. The immediate impact of this significant medical breakthrough is undeniable as tuberculosis death rates declined by two-thirds. Although streptomycin was later hindered by bacterial resistance and proved to be damaging to the human hearing system, the innovations of this miracle drug continue to reverberate. Unfortunately, the success and legacy of streptomycin has been largely overshadowed by its predecessor, penicillin. Yet, a major difference stands between the discovery of penicillin and the discovery of streptomycin. While penicillin was a chance discovery lacking method, the discovery process of streptomycin resulted from a systematic and calculated process that would be emulated for years to come. The shotgun approach that Selman Waxman developed and used to discover streptomycin was later utilized in the discovery of over 40 new antibiotics. Streptomycin heralded the golden age of antibiotics, when over half the drugs used today were discovered. Furthermore, pioneer antibiotics like streptomycin gave rise to and greatly expanded pharmaceutical companies. Streptomycin, one true innovation in history, revolutionized the medical field and humanity. <laughs>